app development is about the enjoyment. Like there are costs to pay like you have to pay for a developer license oh, you have to pay for really? a computer yeah why so do you have to pay to do it i mean sure yeah, like, if you're, the, the you're the one who's to set you back then because you're yeah. the cash cow in all of this because if you don't provide that you create the product and they're charging you to create that product yeah so that's fucking retarded so so the so the developer license is on so every single platform you have to pay a fee and that fee covers hosting your application so like shit. the cdn costs um, the payment costs, so all the payments go through a particular provider. So whether that's you know Apple or Google, they process all the payments, so they get some kickback from that. So that is what your developer license goes towards. Um, so so yeah, so that and that is paid either yearly or you can pay like a fee How for a lifetime. It? So the Apple developer license is. Seventy pounds. Wait, wait. So you have to pay year. different developer licenses yeah, catch for different up, platforms. Um, so seventy quid. So that's yeah, um, a hundred dollars. Hundred dollars a that's year. Fuck. And the Google Play Store is twenty pounds. So you, for one, a lifetime. I guess it's one. Well, well, yeah. No wonder everyone's going for Google then. So it's twenty pounds for a lifetime. Oh, that's quite good. But but I guess, so, I guess so it's wait. one of those things. Like, if you're not really that serious about it, you're not just gonna jump in and put an app out. Yeah, yeah but you would though. If you thought you had a decent app and then you just kind of like lost interest. Yeah, but I mean, if it costs you seventy quid, you're not just gonna just. Oh, like, no, you're not gonna fuck around with that. If case. But you can just to, just uh, just so everyone is 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 aware for both Google and. Apple and I believe Windows as well, well 100% on Windows, you can develop apps, test apps for free. So it's only when you want to actually publish it. So if you just want to mess around, you don't have to pay, it's completely Oh, so free. it's a sandbox and then yeah. once you get out of the sandbox and get into, you know, like into exactly. the playground, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. So if you... Quite literally, yeah, because uh, <laughs> Uh, if you think, oh, do you know what? This app idea has got legs, then you can pay for a developer license to get mm. it onto the app store. So people can already kind of play with it oh, in the beta yeah. in the sandbox yeah, and you get free. other developers having a laugh with yeah, it and yeah. whatever. Completely do you not free. worry that your idea is going to be gonna get going to get nicked in that environment? I think for for me, imitation is the greatest form of flattery. If someone, if I saw two jobs... Yeah, if they made a lot of money from it, um, you're like, motherfucker. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I wouldn't be bitter. I think I'd be, I'd, I'd, I'd be humbled. Be, I'll be Humbled. taken aback. Humbled. <laughs> They're making a million pounds. You're like, oh, it's okay, so, mate. If I'm I stole happy your you app it. idea and yeah. I, I became a billionaire, in journalism, how humble it's stealing would you and it's what we all do, but it's not the point. <laughs> how humble would you be if I stole your app and became like I'll a billionaire? Stuff when someone else takes I'll, my bylines. I'll, 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 be, I'll be extremely humbled. I'll be. I'll, That's good to know. Dude, anybody out there? want to put that in the public. Anybody out there listening? So if you want to nick anything off somebody who's actually happy to have shit stolen from them, Taiwo here is an absolute. Why would you? St- <laughs> I, I think one one of the things with me as a developer, I always try and make stuff that other people are not gonna that that people might not necessarily want to make. So, for example, I think a lot of people that get into development, they'll try to make like a social media app or a task manager app or a camera app. And I think for me, why not make an app that asks users? one simple question or why not make an app that you can only play once or why not make an app where collectively as a community we work together for an objective you know just things that you might on paper think oh that's a bit different isn't like that sort of like sort of um, what's it called uh, where you is it, when you say as a community do you mean as in the developer community or? no no so I'm, I made an application called Cube Sprint and it's there's two game modes on it and it's uh, you control a cube and you have to collect other cubes. It was part of my series where I built five games in five days. So I built five games in five days, and then on Twitter, but I they're asked, all like the same game but with different colours. Um, basically, <laughs> basically, they were all very, very, very. You simple. at the end of it, like fuck everyone. <laughs> very, very, very simple two uh, D games, and I went on Twitter and said to um, the followers what game do you like the best and um the public spoke and cube sprint won and cube sprint is just a really simple game where you're cube collecting other cubes avoiding obstacles but every time you collect a cube it goes to a global pot and once that global pot hits a million a secret mode is unlocked Mm. um but it's one of those games where um you know there are some people that play it all the time but that feat of getting to a million so you know it could be 
200,000 in North America, 100K in Africa, you know, 37K in South America, you know, half a million in Europe, you know, all of like this collection of people working together to get this secret mode, but the secret mode has has not been unlocked. The game's been out for a couple of years. Um, (laughs) And you're shitting it as it gets the 900,000 market. Oh, fuck, I've got to come up with something clever. It's it's getting closer and closer and closer. But the the mode is in there. It's a very secret mode, but will we ever see it? Any hints? No. Is it every gold? uh, The only hint I can give you is collect cubes and you'll find out. um, I feel like he's advertising through us now. (laughs) (laughs) If I'm (laughs) manipulating. Wait, okay, give us a hint. (laughs) Um, it's something it's definitely worthwhile I think so it kind of turns the application on its head and I, I really enjoyed building if it's it. upside down mate, you're going to um, lose a lot of people yeah no, you, just to, you just have to turn your phone upside down yeah. you know, I, yeah. because I built it I'm an idiot <laughs> I built it quite a few years ago um, I, I there's bits of it that I just can't remember that I would have to look back on the code so I think if I was to wake up tomorrow and a million cubes had been collected It'll be quite a nice little thing for me to reminisce about something that I built a couple of years ago. That's really sweet, actually. Yeah. I like, uh, <laughs> and it's like you know, like I mean, but where do people collect? I haven't played the game, so I don't really know. But how do people play the game? Like, yeah, so it's just like they just play it generally. So you're just is it like cube- random cubes in the environment? Is yeah. it like one of those? Ver- is it a bit like Pokemon Go, or is it? No, no. So it's like a very linear environment, and as you, so if you can imagine a cube that's trying to get to the top of the screen, but things are prestigiously being generated and you have to avoid it. So things are being created off screen that come at you and you have to avoid it. But as you avoid these obstacles, there's also cubes that you can collect. Um, and little, there's little tiny That's Easter eggs. Okay. Um, yeah, super simple. It's kind of yeah. like um, a hark back to um, the, the game console of the 70s and the early 80s. So it's completely black and white. Um, yeah, because all your was, games have kind of got like that sort of Nintendo feel to it. Yeah, we were talking about Nintendo before, and I was yeah, like, yeah. I was like, you know, you clearly got kind of an inspirational sort of feel from Nintendo because mm. they have that very particular kind of yeah, definitely, you know, like collecting kind of thing. Yeah, but what about sort of um, not to pull from? I mean, so yeah, because you're collecting stuff a bit like. I like this. This is like old school, proper yeah, old school games. Yeah. It's like it reminds me of the ones we used to play on PlayStation One as well. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, so like in terms of the sophistication of your games, like, um, and I think we've probably discussed this before, but like. Um, how far as a developer do you feel that you want to go with it? Mm. Like, do you feel like you're kind of happy with this kind of level of games, or do you, do you want to kind of like look into sort of creating more sophisticated things? Like, um, I don't know, like the major blockbuster games that we mm. see. Is that something you would think about as a career option, or is it something that you know because you're enjoying being a developer mm. now? Um, you know, like, would where was I going with this? Fuck. Um, you kind of get what I'm going. Yeah, with, yeah, right? no, hundred percent. I think. I think it would be amazing to pull out a kind of triple A title, so games that may be Nintendo or Sony or Rockstar, Ubisoft, you know, really big game studios would put out. I think the biggest issue is I'm kind of like a one man band, so mm. doing the the sound, the controls, the graphics, the concept, the storyline. The, the the whole kind of end to end piece so from concept to finished product that you can download and enjoy it's really difficult to create these really big worlds because it's just a lack of resource mm. you know in these big studios you might have one person who is specializing and works solely on grass. foliage yeah <laughs> you know, grass like the textures of grass so you know you can't really expect um, you know, a triple A game to be made by one person, but mm-hmm. there are a few examples. I think Stardew Valley is a great example of a you know hugely successful, um, fantastic game made by one person. Wow. And another game, I is... bet they were exhausted. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, yeah, yeah, I lost my wife for this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> my yeah. kids don't talk to me no more. <laughs> um, you know, so there there are examples of like huge games that are made by. Um, you know, independent single developers, but they normally take a number of years and are one hundred percent a full time commitment. So it's that it, quite a lot. Yeah, it would it would definitely be a gamble. And as, possession as well. Right? Yeah, no, definitely a gamble and you would have to be all in. And then, you know, you could get to the end of the line and it might not be profitable. So you you really have to do it because you enjoy it. 
I mean, I would love to get involved in a big production, but I think at the moment, I'm very comfortable and enjoying the kind of indie scene. Yeah. How many fans? This is the most YouTube thing we're ever going to do. Yeah. We hope you enjoyed our video. Please do like and subscribe.